In the past, I've covered quite a few videos on certain crimes that have been committed over in Japan because I still feel to this day a lot of the Western world is kind of unaware of a lot of them, maybe because they're not necessarily living in Japan and, you know, are more interested in the country that they're currently living in, or potentially because Japan just seems to be a country where not a lot of crimes happen. And that is most certainly the case. Japan does have one of the lowest crime rates in the world, but that doesn't mean that that crime rate is zero. In fact, Japan is, in my opinion, one of those countries that is very unique in the sense that it's either zero or a hundred and nothing in between. You either are the best law-abiding citizen out there or you commit one of the most insane and heinous crimes ever committed. Today, we're going to be talking about the latter with this particular uh, article from Japan today that I found which says 21 year old sentenced to death for crime he committed as a minor for the first time in Japan. Now, this is gonna be covering obviously a crime, but I wanna kind of get into, and the reason why I wanted to make this video is because of the interesting move that the Japanese jurisdiction has decided to uh, commit to with this particular case and what that means for the Japanese penitentiary system as a whole. A Japanese court sentenced a 21-year-old man to death on Thursday for the 2021 murder of two and arson. In the first case of capital punishment being given to an offender who was a minor at the time of the crime, but whose name has been revealed under a 2022 revision of the juveniles law. The big reason why this change has happened in Japan recently is because I believe late last year or maybe earlier this year, Japan changed its, I guess, standards for what age group is considered to be a minor or an adult. More specifically, before Japan used to treat minors as people under the age of 20, but that has been changed now to under 18, much like a lot of countries out there. So the defendant, Yuki Endo, was 19 at the time of the attack in Kofu, Yamanashi Prefecture. The law change in April 2022, so there we go, April 2022, allows media to reveal the identities of 18 and 19 year old offenders once they are indicted. That is another interesting thing where like, if you are a minor and commit a crime in Japan, legally speaking, they're not allowed to reveal your name to, I guess, protect the minor, even though they might have committed a horrible and heinous crime like this motherfucker has. The media was previously prohibited from reporting names, ages, occupations, residences, and appearances, or publishing photographs of minors under 20. In handing down the ruling at Kofu District Court, presiding judge recognized Endo's full criminal liability and said his age should not be a reason to avoid the death penalty, which is... God damn, if a, if a judge says that to you, you know you are screwed. Endo fatally stabbed the 55-year-old man and his 50-year-old wife at their home in Corfu on October 12, 2021, according to the ruling. He then set the house on fire. So obviously this is an evil, deranged motherfucker who absolutely should be locked up behind bars. But I guess now with this new law change, Japan decided, you know what? Life sentencing, rotting in a cell is 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 too weak. It's too weak for for this kid. This guy needs to get the absolute maximum punishment, more specifically capital punishment, which is rough as shit. The couple had two daughters. One of them told police she came downstairs after hearing a loud argument and saw a man quarreling with her father. The man punched her. Her older sister called police to report that there was an intruder in the house and the two sisters fled as the house was set on fire. Endo, who turned himself in later, suffered burns to his face. That's really interesting that you would commit such an absolutely horrible double murder and an arson and then think to yourself, yeah, I'm probably going to turn myself in. That, that was that was not cool of me to do. So maybe he has some level of remorse to his actions. It's 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 really hard to say. After his arrest, Endo was initially sent to the Kofu family court because he was a minor when the crime was committed, but the family court sent him back to prosecutors. He underwent a psychiatric evaluation and was deemed mentally competent to stand trial. Under Japan's penal code, arson of a dwelling in which a person is present can also also be punished by death. So already he, he has one count of death penalty and now he's just double, triple layering that shit with two very, very unnecessary murders. I say unnecessary murders as if uh, a, a necessary murder is, is a thing that exists. Now you might be thinking, 
Why did you commit such a crime? Why did you do such a horrible act? Well, in the trial, Endo said he committed the crimes as the elder daughter, who attended the same high school, refused to go on a date with him, which made him feel desperate and angry. He also said he was discontent with his relationship with his parents, which is a really, really scary reason to give. It's almost like he's blaming the eldest daughter for the whole reason why she doesn't have a par any parents or a house anymore. Like, that is absolutely messed up. Like, to, to almost victim blame just because a girl you liked rejected you once and didn't go on a date with you, you're gonna do something like that? What is wrong with this kid? Throughout the trial, he offered no apologies for his acts and denied any intention to appeal the ruling, saying he did not want to return to normal life. Well, that's probably the worst thing you could be saying in court, but at least he's being honest. Prosecutors had sought the death penalty, saying the defendant was fully accountable in light of his deliberateness and planning of the criminal acts, which, you know what, I'm no judge, but I kind of agree. Like, this kid clearly has no remorse, did it for an absolutely trivial reason that should not have even been one percent close to committing an act like that so clearly all of the fault 100 million percent of the fault goes towards this absolutely deranged sad kid they said the girl and a younger sister suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder jesus christ i don't fucking blame them the elder sister took part in the trial through a video link but said she was too afraid to speak of her feelings in front of endo which yeah kind of makes sense like if this kid gets out for example maybe doesn't get the the life sentence or whatever and you know has to maybe spend like say 20 30 40 years enough for him to if he's on good behavior manages to get out after that who knows what this kid is going to do when once he's out of jail again like he's probably going to go and finish her off or do some other fucking heinous crimes that is you know no child should ever fucking think about especially after what happened to your parents in your house in a statement read out by the prosecutor she said he will come to kill me if he has the chance to get out i want him to never be allowed outside and i want to guarantee that he will not again I don't blame the kid, honestly. The defense team had called for a lighter sentence, arguing the defendant had a diminished capacity at the time of the attack. Since 1983, when the Supreme Court set its standards for giving the death penalty, there have been seven cases in which the death penalty has been finalized for offenders who committed a crime as a minor. The so-called Nagayama standard uh, has been used for decades in determining whether to apply the death sentence. According to this Wikipedia article here, in Japan, the courts follow guidelines laid down in the trial of Norio Nagayama, a 19-year-old from a severely disadvantaged background who committed four separate robbery murders in 1968 and was finally hanged in 1997. The Tokyo High Court originally gave him a life term, but in 1983, the Supreme Court of Japan held it was an error and quashed this sentence before sending Nagayama back on death row. The court ruled that the penalty shall be decided in con consideration of the degree of criminal liability and balance of justice based on a nine-point set of criteria which includes degree of viciousness, motive, how the crime was committed, outcome of the crime, sentiments of the bereaved family members, impact on the crime on Japanese society, defendant's age, defendant's previous criminal record, and degree of remorse shown by the defendant. Uh, in order for them to pull out this piece of paperwork, you have really must have messed up as a minor, which, you know, this kid clearly was at the time that he committed the crimes. And so I guess for the first time in a very long time, they are going to take that into consideration and are going to give this kid the death penalty. Aside from allowing the media to reveal the names of 18 and 19 year old offenders, the revised juveniles law implemented in April of 2022 also expanded the range of crimes in which such offenders are referred to prosecutors from family courts and tried as adults. The revision came in tandem with Japan lowering the age of the adulthood to 20 to 18, as I mentioned earlier. So this has kind of caused, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say an uproar, but an interesting open can of for a debate when it comes to should minors in Japan be tried in the same way as a fully functioning adult. And what's interesting is that when you look at the comment section of this particular article, it's almost 50-50. Some people agree that yes, this guy as a kid committed this terrible act should immediately just have him cut off 
from society in the form of a capital punishment. While there are others who are saying, no, giving him the capital punishment is too easy. It's it's kind of making him win in a sense. Rather, they should just leave him in jail for the rest of his life so that he could think about and reflect and possibly, you know, show a little bit of remorse after a while on the actions that were given. This is a, a really kind of it's a fragile subject to talk about, really, because I feel there's no, like, correct answer. You know, obviously, it's going to depend on, like, how you view this kind of thing from a moral standpoint, which is obviously subjective. But for me personally, no, this is just my opinion, I think that Japan, in a lot of senses, does let criminals off a little bit easier than they do in other countries, or maybe that they deserve to, especially when it comes to, like, sexual abuse acts and any kind of, like, sexual acts. Japan's way of punishing these criminals is very, very low, especially to a lot, compared to a lot of other Western countries. Th this is, again, me talking, just my opinion, from a moral, from my moral standpoint, I think that if somebody murders someone, then I feel, tit for tat, eye for an eye, they should kind of go through the same thing. I'm gonna go back to full metal, but like, you know, equivalent exchange. If you do something, whether it's good or bad, I think you deserve to get that exact same thing thrown back at you in equal terms. Karma is a bitch, but only if you do something to make karma a bitch. So me personally, I think giving this kid the death penalty is the right thing to do because he clearly has shown no remorse. He probably doesn't even want to show remorse. And as we saw in this article, it seems that if the kid is thrown in jail for, say, you know, the 20, 30, 40 years, not anything but the life sentence, who knows what will happen if he is thrown back into Japanese society? As we saw with the uh, the Nagayama uh, standard, uh, one of the criteria was how much of an impact it does this crime have on Japanese society? And I think showing by example for something like this is the best way to tell people who are even thinking about committing similar or, God forbid, worse crimes that, hey, don't fuck around in this country. If you do, if you fuck around, you will find out just like this kid has found out. But again, I feel for something like this, it is a case by case. It's really difficult to just nail down. But in this particular case, um, I think this kid absolutely deserves it. He is a horrible human being and should be wiped off the face of the earth uh, like he so deserves to. That's just my opinion. And I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about this whole story. So let me know down in the comments below. Do you think this, should, this kid should get the death penalty? Do you think minors in Japan should get the death penalty? Or should they be thrown in jail with the hopes that they might come around and become a good person again? I'd love to know all your thoughts and opinions on that. So please let me know down in the comments below. And hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here. Subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger. Over here next to my head is a couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one. Links to my social media, as well as my Patreon to support me directly. And Nonsense, my clothing brand. Check it out at nonsense.jp. Links in the description. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.